In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair a surfboard. This can apply to dings or major repairs like this one where the fiberglass has completely separated from the board. If you want to know what happened to this board, check out the link in the description below. Here I am marking out the board so I can see where to cut to remove the bad section. Using a rotary tool with a cutting disc, the section is cut out. Okay, so what I've done is I've used my Dremel in a vacuum to keep the, the fiberglass dust down. And I've Dremeled all the way around the spot here, which has bubbled. So I'm going to peel it off now. So I initially went around and figured out where it was bubbled up, and I used a Sharpie and I marked it so I had a reference point for when I started cutting. And I'm going to hopefully reuse this piece of glass. It seems okay. It's tinted. It'll just save me some time um, and material. So I'm just going to probably re-glass this down and see how it holds up. What I'll probably end up having to do is probably a big patch maybe on the forward section. I haven't decided that yet. But I'm going to peel it off now. So there's the piece that I've peeled off. Everything else is structurally sound around it, pretty much. And as you can see where it had really good adhesion because it's basically pulled off the foam. So I've had no issues with adhesion. So now I'm going to have to get some epoxy and glass this back down. And I might have to shrink this, cut this, make that a little bit smaller because this glass is obviously stretched a little bit just from the expansion. And then I'll reinforce the whole thing with some four, four ounce glass probably. And I also need to find to see if I have pigment to match uh, all the way around, but I'm not too, too worried about that.
Okay, so what I've done, what I've just done, is I've heated this because it was convex up when it bubbled. So I heated it, flattened it, I put it back onto this spot, then I heated it again, not too much because I didn't want to damage the rest of the board. I used a bit of a, a piece of wood occasionally to smooth it out a bit, and now it's sitting nice and level. So now what I'll do is, it's still a little warm, I'll let this set, and then I'm going to uh, get grab some epoxy, mix it up, and laminate this back down. So I'm ready to apply the epoxy. So what I've done is this, after heating it up with the heat gun, is nice and flat again. It doesn't have a concave or convexness to it. Convex, I should say. So it's not domed. I have some... I've masked off the area just so I don't make too much of a mess. I'm going to sand it anyway, but this will just help uh, because I'm going to have to... Per after I glue this back in... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a layer of glass probably across this just for some reinforcement and then I'll have to feather it in with the rest of the board. So that's kind of the idea. It'll probably make this front part of the board a little stronger than the rest. Hopefully it won't affect the performance too much but I'm not riding that high performance anyway so uh, I just want to get this back out in the water. So next I'm going to mix up some epoxy. Uh, I got some resin research um, it's two parts resin to one part hardener. Uh, I usually weigh it and then I mix it. Um, and then I'm going to just brush it on. So I need a brush. I've got some gloves. So I'm going to mix that up and uh, we'll put this, we'll glue this back in. And then I'm probably going to clamp it or put some weights on it just to hold it in. But right now it already looks like it's holding fairly well. It's just around the edges where I might have to tape it. Um, if you need to do something like this, uh, try taping it. It just depends. Every board might be slightly different, every repair. So I'm just going to wing it. Okay, I'm not quite sure how much resin I need. So I'm going to start with 50 grams and see what it looks like. Uh, I'm just kind of guesstimating at this point. Because I'm not laminating a whole board, it's not entirely critical because I can always mix up a little extra. I think I need a little more than 50. I'll go 100. I think that should be enough. And I'll add the hardener and mix, and then we'll start laminating. So that should be more than enough to laminate back down, what I'm doing. In fact, it might be too much now. But, let me mix it up. Scraping the sides. Actually, the amount I mixed up wasn't too bad. Alright, so next, now that I got this all saturated, I'm going to lay my original piece back in, squish it down, clamp it, and then let it sit for a couple hours and see how it makes out.
that's a little better. I added enough so that it squishes out the edges here. That's actually looking really nice. I almost don't need to clamp it. Okay, what I might do is just stick some weights on it, and I'm going to call that done. Yep, that looks pretty good. So I have some weights here. I'm just going to squish these down on this. Also, I wanted to show you what happens if you let epoxy sit in the pot too long. I had a little bit left over and it's really hot out. As you can see, it's starting to exofirm, so it's getting super hot. It's like, it could catch fire uh, if there was any large uh, volume of it. So, don't, uh, don't leave it alone. Make sure to spread it out, if, especially if it's a really hot day. Because today it's like 30 degrees Celsius out. So it's actually melting the paintbrushes on this. The bristles on the paintbrush and uh, starting to deform the bottom of the yogurt container here so don't do that so what I decided to do was just to throw a few clamps on it I'd use some wood here just to level out to make kind of a clamp just to hold down the edge it was holding fairly well but I just wanted to make sure nice squeeze out a lot of the epoxy so I'm getting a really great seal a lot of it oozed out you can kind of see it there so uh, I just put some clamps all the way around so I'm just gonna let this set now for probably six hours all right it's been a few hours it's time to remove everything I also forgot to mention, I put a piece of plastic down before I clamped anything, so that way, uh, if it's stuck, it wouldn't be a big deal. Let's peel it right off. Okay, I'm going to let this set a bit more, but it's looking pretty nice. The other thing I'm going to do is I have a razor blade here, before I forget. I'm going to razor off some of this before it fully sets. It's still a little gooey, so I can shave off some of this. Really make it a lot easier for sanding later. I'm just going to raise it off all the high bumps. I don't have that many, so that's actually looking pretty good. So I'm getting ready to glass this, and what I'm probably going to do is cut out a patch of fiberglass to glass all the way around, um, just to make it kind of symmetrical. If I were just to glass this part here, it would probably make this part just a little bit more rigid. It might make the board ride a little funny 
it probably wouldn't matter, but it's just as easy for me to glass all the way around. So I got some sandpaper. I'm going to rough it up for to make this uh, to, so the epoxy will adhere and uh, also smooth out some of this uh, edge here of what I glued back in. So some of this epoxy here, just to remove that as well. Now I'm going to roll out some glass to strengthen this because this right here, there's not a solid piece of glass now in epoxy or resin, depending on if you're doing a polyester board, um, to, to hold the integrity of the board together. So this section now is compromised. It's not going to be as strong. Unfortunately, because I'm going to glass it from here up, this might create a bit of a stress point here. It's probably fine for me because I'm not riding in the hugest of waves and this is epoxy board, it's pretty strong. So anyways, you might have to gauge that for yourself depending on your board. Ideally, I would probably throw another 4 ounces of glass on the bottom of this board, but I want to keep the weight down and I'm being lazy, so I'm just going to glass this section here, so all the way across. So i got my roll of fiberglass here and I'm just going to roll it out. I got a pair of sacrificial scissors from the dollar store that works really well. I go through a couple pairs when I'm building boards. Um, they're cheap. I just throw them out when I'm done. I got these for like two bucks uh, once they start getting dull. So I just want to kind of eye up how where I want this. So it's roughly about here. So I'm just going to cut it across. So, when you're cutting fiberglass, you definitely should wear a dust mask. I'm being bad, I don't have one on right now, just so I can talk so you can hear me. But uh, I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to stick a mask on, because I'm going to be trimming all the way around. And every time I cut, little fibers come off, uh, come off of the, uh, the cloth. So what I'm going to do is trim all the way around so it fits this board nicely. So I'm going to have a patch like that and I'm going to laminate this down and then throw another coat of resin on it and that should uh, and then feather it out by sanding it and that should make this repair nice and solid. Unfortunately I couldn't find the resin tint that I had used when I had uh, first built this board so I'm going to see a bit of a line here once I get this all glassed and it's nice and clear. Not a big deal. Yeah, adds character to the board.
something I wanted to mention, and I kind of glossed over it earlier, was around the sanding, is when I was sanding this, I got rid of all of the glossy. Now, you want this sanded down to the point where there's absolutely no shiny spots. And you want to use a really coarse sandpaper because we're bonding um, a new layer onto this. So really important, sand it down really, really good. You want use a coarse sandpaper. I went all the way down to a 60, roughed it right up. So that way it gives a mechanical bond for the epoxy to adhere to the previous layers of epoxy. Now, once that's done, I'm going to wipe this down with some denatured alcohol, methyl hydrate in my case. You can use some type of alcohol, but you want something that doesn't leave a residue. So I've gotten rid of all of the, the dust. I have my bottle of alcohol here. I'm just going to dip this in and wipe this down, get rid of all of the dust and the prints and oil and grease, and silicone, anything that will prevent adhesion. I'm going to clean one and do it one more time. 